This is Selma Schimmel at ASCO 2011 in Chicago, where our discussion continues with some of the most noted oncologists and key opinion leaders reporting on different areas of cancer, all cancer types, here at the ASCO meeting. And now we're with one of our group room regulars and favorites. In fact, he is our GI cancer key opinion leader, Dr. Professor. Heinz Joseph Lenz, Associate Director for Clinical Research and co-leader of the Gastrointestinal Cancers Program at the USC Norris Comprehensive Cancer Center, Professor of Medicine and Preventive Medicine at the Keck School of Medicine at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. Hello, Heinz Joseph Lenz. Hello, I'm always happy to see you. And this is a very exciting time for development of new drugs and the theme of ASCO this year is personalized medicine, and we have a lot of reasons to believe that will become reality in the not so far future. One of the reasons I love talking with you and being able to bring you directly to our viewing audience is that not only are you a medical oncologist, but you have your own lab. Mm -hmm. yes. And now must be the most exciting time to have your own laboratory. Yeah. I. I I think it's an incredible time to be in and witness the changes, um, what's going on with the opportunities of treatment options for our patients. From five, six years ago with one or two drugs, we have five drugs, and we are on the verge to really crack down the code of different cancers, how we can attack. And we see again at this meeting, we are getting closer and closer. There will be not one miracle drug changing everything and curing colon cancer or lung cancer and breast cancer with the same treatment. But we understand more and more the key players in these cancers and have developed now drugs to interfere with these players and see dramatic clinical changes. Dr. Lenz, one of the things we keep hearing about are the identification of these new pathways. Yes with all kinds of acronyms and letters that identify these pathways. The problem is it's very complex for the general consumer and patient to understand. What I would love to have you do is try to, in simple English, explain this mechanism and how these pathways actually lead to the development of targeted therapies that attack these different pathways and proteins and enzymes and things like that? You know, it's not complicated only for patients. It's the same complexity for the practicing oncologists in the community. The news are traveling so fast, it's not easy to really understand all the interactions of the genetic changes. But in order to simplify, it's very easy, actually. You visualize a highway-free map of Los Angeles or New York or Chicago. You have a map, all these freeways are connected. We all know, living in Los Angeles, where the key intersections are in the city, where there is always a traffic jam. We know that other freeways are less frequently used and you have less uh, intersection problems. But this connection of different freeways is the network information of a cancer cell. And you know, if you develop one drug which maybe interfere with one intersection or one major exit. We know how to detour it. We know we go off Avenue 53 and go on on Avenue 72. And the cancer cell can do that too. So it is very important not to know only what the most important intersection is. We need to know all the intersections, how they communicate with each other, and the level of traffic. If there is no traffic on this freeway, inhibiting this freeway doesn't make any sense. In order to be successful, when you live in LA, you have to shut down the 10 freeway or the 490 in Chicago. And if you're able to do that, then you see the progress and the success in the tumor. My cancer manifests differently, even though it may be the same diagnosis in the general sense as the person next to me, but our pathways, we may have the same pathways, but they manifest differently or they jam up differently, like one's on the 405 and one's on the 134? Yes, so I think you're hitting a very important point. To identify one of this genetic alteration is not giving us the answers. 
they may mean differently in breast cancer versus colon cancer. And why would that be? Because the interaction of this molecular change or this intersection of freeway means completely something different when you change the environment. Now, we have learned over years that every tumor has about six to eight major intersections, not more. But these intersections are not the same from one colon cancer to the other. Here is the challenge in the future for drug development. We need to identify these, what we call, driving mutations, the ones who make the tumor grow and metastasize. And we are getting close to do that. If we know the variations of these six to eight driving mutations, we will be able to really personalize treatment. So what does it take? It takes the drug developed and it takes the selection of the patient. A target drug without selection of the patient will not work. We need to understand the molecular makeup. We need to know what major intersections drive the tumor. We test for this. We need to know where the traffic and the intersections are and then pick the medications which interfere with this special network of mutations. So while we understand this, this network or this you know, highway, different pathways equivalent to the highways, one's personal genomic profiling will then influence the direction yes. that they need to take yes. to get home. Yes. You know, and I think there is a lot of progress because we were so optimistic with a targeted drug with one specific target, HER2, EGF receptor. But these are one major exit. To be successful, you have to shut down the freeway and not one exit alone. And we have learned to see that how to do that because all these freeways communicate. But the variation from one cancer to this other cancer in another patient, even it's still colon cancer, can be traumatic. So we need to know what drives an individual tumor to do an individual treatment. We are getting closer and closer. We can now do under $1,000 whole genome sequencing. The challenges are not that we cannot find it. We still don't know the individual traffics and how they're all connected and what it means to set specific treatments. But we are getting close. So fast that the data we are generating is almost too much to consume and understand in the same time, time frame. Are you still doing your blog? I'm still on C3 Coalition. I'm trying to update that when there's a new gene, when there's a new treatment, new concepts, um, in order to really communicate that with the um, patients because I think going on website is very confusing. And I think to give some guidance is really very, very critical. Thank you, Dr. Lenz, really, for being a forerunner in this area of research and for sharing your time with us. Associate Director for Clinical Research, co-leader of the Gastrointestinal Cancers Program, USC Norris Comprehensive Cancer Center, and Professor of Medicine and Preventive Medicine at the Keck School of Medicine at the University of Southern California. And Salma, I couldn't thank you much because I think this is so critical for your viewers to see what's going on and maybe feel a little bit the excitement that there is so much to come which all changes the lives of our patients. Thank you. <laughs>